Hello and welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. I'm Kirsten and today I have been making clusters but I've kind of been trying to do it like as if it's a flower. Um, I have, this is the top of a curtain. So what I've done is I have painted it with my gesso paint, white paint and kind of neutral colours um, mixtures that I've got. So like that's a wee bit of raw sienna. That's a bit of burnt sienna and there's raw umber in here as well. I would I will say the 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 dominant colour here is the burnt sienna. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. I'm talking about these clusters. So because they're on this, they're quite heavy duty and they could probably take a lot of handling and some um so I think they could be suitable for front covers or for pockets that are used a lot. So I was thinking about my altered book, which I love. Love my altered book. I had the little Victorian ladies and I just thought, do you know, that would be perfect just sitting on here. I wouldn't want to put it up here and cover her up or even there as if it's part of the skirt. But I think it would go really nice. And because of this as well, because this has got quite a rough texture to begin with, I think that with the matte medium, it would stick, you know, really securely. And then I've got this little journal that I'm, you know, working away on. It's just got little bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. It's even got a little bit of, um, that was a clockwork orange underneath that, but I covered it over because I thought, oh, it's not really vintage enough. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. So I thought something like that, or even the orange one, because there's orange on it, would go well on something like this. And then I was looking at the pocket one, you know, as a pocket. You could actually cover up that bit there, have that nice top, and then have the pocket. And then I'll put it back in the right order. I was looking at this one as well. This is my vintage bird journal. Two is a bit of an overkill, but you get the idea. So, um, the papers that I work on, I, I keep, and then I use, um, you know, within the junk journals. And what I've done is, I've went a wee bit over the top of the green though which I didn't intend to do, but I did. I've been using oil pastels around the sides. So I've kind of stopped using the green one because I feel like it, I went a wee bit over the score with it. <laughs> so I've got raw umber and oak, oak, okra. Is that how you say it? Okra. And olive brown, which is the kind of greeny one. So I have done the back of, I still have to do the back of this one. So actually I've done it slightly different because as I've went on with the oil pastel doing it, I've, I've learned actually less is more. And I've been going round the edges. As you can see, it's, it's becoming fairly cracked through it. And then I've got the light brown here as well. This is the okra one. Okra, okra. Ochre. Is it ochre? And I just like to get a wee bit extra in these corners just to give that more vintage fit and I'm, I'm going to put a wee bit of green in here. And then I have baby oil, wherever you are. Oh, I had to take my cardigan off there. The sun just came out suddenly and I'm sitting in the conservatory so it's, um, when I say the conservatory, it's like a glorified greenhouse <laughs> and that's certainly what it feels like when the, sun's, the sun comes out. So I just use the baby oil um, to help 
spread the oil pastel. I generally actually use my hands, but the baby oil, if you're doing quite a lot, the baby oil is a better option because it can be quite rough on your hands, actually. And also, I always look like I've come in from some heavy duty gardening. So, this one was done with my fingers, and this one is being done with the baby oil. Do you know, you can get proper um, blending oils for the um, oil pastels. I just don't have any, so trying to keep it contained on here. And I was using a little bit of, like you could get a cloth, but I, this is some quite pliable tissue paper. It actually came from packaging. There we go. I feel that using my hands did give it a um, slightly more authentic look. You know, like real. There we go. But that's fine. And I always think, see these wee bits that are on it, they just add to it, don't they? So... That's that bit oil pastled up. I need to put this away because I actually had to throw out my last bit of brown paper because I had baby oil everywhere. And it's a bit of a waste. Well, it's covered in green already, in orange and brown. So I'm just going to set this here. So, um, I am not a sewer, so I've been using matte medium gosh I'm nearly done when I say nearly done I've got about a third left so I've been scrunching my papers up before I put them on because I'm trying to create a little bit of texture to it and I'm trying to have it all as if it's nestling in together in a little nest I'm going to put that one on slightly differently. Maybe do it this. No. Like there. For all I've painted the, this, I still want it um, mostly hidden away. And then next I'll just use a book page. happy with that but it went off to the wrong side uh, the wrong size it got too small too fast I like to tear it out in a very um do my words are gone today I like to tear it out in a way that is natural but sometimes it just goes awry when you do that. I've actually really enjoyed doing these. Do you know that? They've been... Um, I don't know. It, sometimes I find that I do a lot of jelly prints and I do a lot of um, like folding papers and everything and I actually feel like I'm doing something... I'm actually creating something, not just gluing onto paper. It does take a wee bit of time with this. And I do have the Distress Inks, but I just don't have the Blender tool yet. And I find that when I put it on, it doesn't look good. So I've been, ha been trying to water it down. And um, I've not been doing very well with that either. So I've got out the oil pastels. I'm trying to be really careful with this baby oil. Do you know, you could get really arty-farty with this and get really 
um, glue it into it so you could You know, I first got back into art using oil pastels. I've got quite a lot of oil pastel artwork. Um, did a lot of flowers, landscapes. So, putting the lid on. See, because I'm being so careful, it's actually putting me off this stride. I'm just going to do that. I just like it. I just think it's more natural if you're going to, because I'm making the pages look aged. That's part of it, isn't it? So I'm, I'm kind of rotating it as I go. So I have. Do you know, I might just use, where are you? I might just use this. I wouldn't even say that this needs any going over because, see, because I've been using it to wipe. I'm probably just going to use it as it is. Thing I like about this as well is it's a little bit more pliable so you can actually manipulate it more and then I want to put a wee bit in there just to put that together there okay right I think we're going to get some green because we've not got any green yet what have I got here I have a, a very big box of snaps and I think we'll use this one. Watching, um, oh, who was I watching this morning? It was different. I watched somebody new and I can't remember who it was. That's terrible. Once when you first start using the oil pastel to do this, it's a little bit more difficult. But once you get into the swing of it and um, the wee ridges start appearing on the actual oil pastels, it is a lot easier. want to put too much bob oil in this one because it's as you get nearer to the top I just want it to be a little bit brighter I feel the first couple I did were very grungy <laughs> there we go just very very Wonderful. Look. Looks like it's all been scorched around the edges. I love it. Then when you give it a wrinkle up, some of it goes onto the creases, which is very good too. I'm just trying to think how do I want to go that way or do I want to go this way? And I think I'm going to choose this way.
Do you know, see this one? Can I, I'll just show you this. This is a just a book page, a cheap book that's not worth anything. And look at that. How fabulous is that? I drew something else I was bringing out to you. Um, I know I've said I want to do green in this one as well. I'll try and, do you know what? I'll try and, I'll use this corner here. I made these collage papers the other day. There is a video and I really feel I should use them. I'm not so keen on the straight edge. But I'm going to put these, um, that wee bit there. I will use that. Just inking around. I love the matte medium um, as a non-sore matte medium is the way forward because it has great adhesion proper properties once it dries because it's designed for artists so there we go right I did have one circle that I was going to put in the middle of this one there it is does it go it does I suppose because you don't really see the green there I was putting one circle right in the middle of this one as my focal point I bet I should be putting a purple one now There we go. Right, I'm going to cut this off before I um, do the next bit. So I've done a wee variety of centres. I've used string. This was just left over bits of string. I tried to make a little flower out of it. It's a bit... Um, it's definitely rustic. I was I would go as far as to say it looks quite incompetent. <laughs> but never mind. You can't really see it that much. This is waxed thread from the book binding kit. This is a brayer. And this is string that I've threaded through. Oh, I was putting that one in a tag to show you as well. But it works well in a tag. Um so I think for this one, because this is like a little mini one compared to them. I am going to use the thread and I will find, I think there's a yellowy colour that I'll use. Yeah, this one. So I'm just poking two holes with it all. I'm no expert at the old threading. Um, I just tie it in a wee knot here and it gets it gets me through a couple of loops. Made this one quite wide but it's nice to change it up a bit I'm 
which I'm thinking a dark brown might have been better on this one, but that's fine. Right, the needle came off at the right time. Right, so that's about... Well, it doesn't really matter because it's actually going to be a short one, this one. So I just slip one to one side and then one to the other. Here we go. I'm just going to tie this one in a wee knot and leave little just a couple of little strands from it. You could actually, do you know, I'm just thinking, quite nice just hanging off. But we're not going to do that today. a little bit long. There. Could have even done it so it was just that actually and tied it at the back. That would have been nice. I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium. I like to put my strings in, to, in place. There we go. But I do that with the bows, that's still wet. It just, I just feel it makes it just look that wee bit tidier in bows. I, I don't know how people make these perfect looking bows. If I get a bow that looks semi-passable, I'll stick it down. Here we go. So I might stick some of these on just now. So I've got some books coming that I'm waiting on. And um, some pattern books. They are I've seen it on Nicole Relax Cut and Glue. I think it's Pepin. Pepin? Um, Walder Books is going to be wondering what's going on. They'll be like, why is this bookseller keeping on buying our books? Because what, what did I buy the other day? Oh, that's terrible. The Victorian costume book. I bought that the other day. And then... Um, what one was I going to put on here? I think it was this one because it was this one. If I'd put the purple circle there, I could have put that one on. But the orange is a bit much with it. Yeah, so I've bought these pattern books. They range in price. There's some of some of them are like three pound, and some of them are like twenty five pound. It's I suppose that there's certain designs that are more sought after than others. But I'm a bit of a miser, so I went for the cheapy option. I only chose the cheaper ones, and I've also got. I think I've mentioned it on here before. I've got. Robert, Robert Opie or Opie um, books and he it's scrapbooking books from dedicated to different decades and it's really quite they're amazing a lot of the stuff on it and I'm like I recognize that from like if I've seen other youtubers use or online or whatever so um, and those books as well they are they range in price from like three to fifteen pound as well so I think the 1970s book for some reason was the most expensive there's maybe just less of them I 
here we go it says got tall i'm a victorian ladies one i'm going to put that on here There we go. What I might do with this one because it is right on the cover. I have confidence that they are resilient and sturdy, but I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of matte medium onto the edge of this paper. Because what I want to do is actually turn that up a bit. There we go. Oh, they look like they're having a good chin wag about her, don't they? I think it's maybe slightly there. I wanted them at an angle, but I think it went too far. But there we go. Love these Victorian ladies because they really do look like they say not nice things about people so there we go there's some clusters they are i mean they are just clusters i just tried to make them with a backing that i just felt was more appropriate to put onto a front cover um so that it was less fragile and i've tried to make it a kind of nesting effect almost like just rotating it around slightly every time i put on a new bit and then using the oil pastels instead of the Distress ink because I'm still waiting on my blender. So, um, that's it just now. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm hoping that you'll go and make lots of clusters. <laughs> and I hope to see you soon. And take care.